Alright guys, in today's video, we are going to show you guys the top 5 tricks to get to the 5-0 level. Now you guys specifically should incorporate these tricks in games that are very close and you need a couple extra strategies in order to win the game. Another case scenario that you guys can use these tricks is when you're in a game that is very repetitive doing the same thing. Switching it up on your opponent can win you the points very easily. But do note that if you keep doing these tricks over and over again, your opponent will catch on and then counter your tricks that you do. So make sure to use them sparingly in matches. Before we start today's video, make sure you guys do like, subscribe, and comment your favorite trick because it does help out these videos so we can make more of them for you guys so you guys can reach the 5-0 level. So starting off with number one guys, this one you use very sparingly and in certain situations it happens a couple times on the pro level and I do use it a lot in my game and that's when you do a half lob drive to the opponent's backhand down the line. Now you usually use this in situations when you're cross court dinking with an opponent and then you can change it up down the line, especially if your opponent gives you a very good cross court dink, you can actually do a half drive lob down the line. Now why is this shot specifically effective? Well because your opponent will have to do an overhead slam but with their backhand. Now it's normally only good doing that with your forehand so with the backhand you're kind of catching them in a motion like this where do note that the ball will still come back over but you will have an easier shot in order to put away to finish the point. I recommend to use this one very sparingly around one to two times per match but it can definitely throw off your opponent to win you guys easy points in order to finish out a match. All right so trick number two this is for all of you guys having trouble with people repeatedly lobbing and you can't seem to finish the point. Normally you would want to overhead slam all of those lobs but do interchange a slice drop shot to bring them up close because one if you're going against slower opponents this will especially work and finish the point point. and two if your opponent is able to hit the ball then you're easily able to slam a supposed pop-up now if your opponent does give you a very good dink props to them and you continue the point but most likely often than not you are able to win these points now this shot specifically is very user friendly because you are not necessarily required to slam a bunch of balls you're really only required to just slice and drop the ball very close to the kitchen so this should be very easy to incorporate in your guys's games and now on to trick number three we have my personal favorite the half speed up this is specifically when you are at the kitchen you are able to to essentially trigger a firefight with your opponent on purpose. Now why would you want to do this? Especially in matches where there is a lot of firefights and your opponents are very trigger happy at the kitchen and tend to win points on you, what you can do is reduce the speed of your shot and increase the precision because then your opponent would want to attack that ball anyways, but it's not a smart ball for them to attack. So then they normally pop up a very fast drive that you can then finish very easily slamming the ball down on the floor. Now I do put a warning, this one you should practice a lot because it does take a little bit of time to get used to do but once you master it down you can win a lot of easy speed up battles by outsmarting your opponent and getting one step ahead of them. I think the biggest display of this is actually when an opponent used it against me. See we don't only show my highlights on this channel but it is a very good demonstration on changing up the speed of the game can result in your opponent which was me enforcing an error. Now do note this type of shot as well as the lob drive down the line tip previously they both are shots that require you to be ready to counter so do note that it's not finishing the point but rather you are countering the shot because they are giving you an easier shot but do note about this trick is that there is a counter to it if your opponent does not speed up and reset it they can get a really good aggressive dink on you so this shot relies on your opponent speeding up that shot so do know that the one counter is if your opponent can reset it well so trick number four we have lobbing your opponent at the kitchen when there's non-aggressive dings or to disrupt the rally. So this one is pretty much the best situation where you should lob. This is the situation. Every single other one, it's really conditional, but right here is where you should incorporate the lob. When you are in a long dink rally with opponents, it's all about disrupting the flow of the game in your favor. 
So what you want to do is when your opponent is especially not really uh, dinking that aggressive and it's getting longer, you can actually incorporate a lob to quickly push your opponent back because they are so front heavy on the court. A lot of pros use this, including Gabe Tardio. He does it best, and he has won multiple matches against the Johns brothers using this exact strategy. So you guys should definitely pick up this tip. And if you guys do want to see a tutorial on how to specifically do this with proper form and to do it every single time, make sure you guys do subscribe so you guys can watch out for that video. The last one, number five, is a very fun trick that you guys can incorporate, and that is the poach bait. So what you guys can do here is if you or your partner is known to be more of a poacher or you're playing mixed, what you can do is actually bait your opponent to think you're about to poach and then they will attack down the line on you. But you are prepared for that one step ahead and you are ready down the line to do a counter attack. Now again, what you guys will find familiar with all of these tricks is that it's about disrupting your opponent and the flow of the game. If you or someone else poaches a lot, you can use that to your advantage, right? So for the next point, let's say you've been poaching the entire match, you're like 6-4, you're up 6-4, Maybe it's 5-5, five, five. you want to switch things up, right? They're going to expect you to poach. So move purposely in a poachful position before they're about to hit the ball. And then that triggers them to want to attack down the line on you because they think they have a very good shot. But you're going to be back in time in order to counter that shot and hopefully win the point. This is a very good trick and it works a lot around the 3-5 to 4-5 level. So if you guys are struggling in tournaments or anywhere during that level and there's intense poaching. Make sure that you do incorporate this one. I think who does this the most personally is Colin Schick. I do see him do it a lot and he does it very fast. So do make sure to watch the pros matches and watch for all of these tricks so you guys can incorporate in your guys' game. But that is it. That is the top five tricks. If you guys have any more, please let me know down in the comments and maybe we might make a part two to this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys on the courts.